coming first to in the leptospirosis i will not go in detail about the pathogenesis or uh, approach here so it's more of acute phase and the immune phase acute phase the most of the time the patients don't come to us in the acute phase it's all the immune phase uh, and we come across uh, they can come with a uh, hemoptysis or like a myocarditis or acute and the liver failure or a gi bleed or acute kidney injury all that so in this see what we come across in the most common in the scenarios or just a minute So, middle-aged man and the farmer by occupation and the history of the fever since like two weeks and the treated elsewhere. In last two days, like jaundice and worsening and the decreased urine output and the generalized nasarka. With this, uh, the scenario. So we get to know that in last two days and the jaundice decreased urine output. So the liver is going into impending like failure. The decreased urine output, the and the acute kidney kidney you know, injury is already settled in. so the most of the times so we fail to take history from the like patient or from the like patient families like former by occupation which is like most important and also other scenarios of the young lady and the sewage worker so which is like most important because and the leptospirosis is a one so which actually gets like transmitted from the urine from the uh, the infected and the water like so sewage water the urine from all these uh, like the bugs and the history of the like severe like myalgia the fever since like one week like a cough and the shortness of breath so this tells us that uh, some kind of uh, the septicemia is like uh, going on along with that the respiratory failure like cough and the shortness of breath and the presenting like with shock on arrival like fine to have like mild liver dysfunction with like non oliguric and ek so these are the scenarios like which they uh, come to us most of the time so diagnosis the clinical and laboratory so it is more of a non specific like a flu like illness uh, through like a febrile illness as well fever headache like a myalgia and the rigor and the conjunctival suffusion so this is something which is like most important so you can see in the images the conjunctival like suffusion so these are some kind of like a pathognomonic and the future with on the leptospirosis and uh, the severe forms and you will see and the renal injury the uveitis and erds pulmonary hemorrhage myocarditis and the rhabdomyolysis all this like shows and there is a immune phase activation in these patients so anectric and the ectric phase the first phase and the second phase like uh, same the most importantly why i am uh, telling this these two are anectric and the ectric is the the sample like what you are going to send for the like diagnosis is actually differs because in the fa- first phase here it's it's more of a blood and the second phase here it's like a urine so but, but here though the second phase is like uh, majority is an urine it can also be seen in the like a first phase as well so ectric and anectric has got some amount of under differences but we should know that so here the so most of the time it's kind of generalized like symptoms like myalgia headache abdomen pain and vomiting and all that so but here if you see the patient is already stepped into some kind of an organ failures like jaundice pulmonary hemorrhage and the renal failure so lab diagnosis it, it's not very suggestive of everything but it can be involvement of all the organs and the routine the cbc and the routine it shows and the left shift of all the wbc is in the 60% of the patients and the high cpk so because of the like a muscle injury and the renal injury it's more of hyponatremia and hypokalemia these are not actually diagnostic these all tells that and there is some amount of and the organ failure is like a going on and if you take like csf like lymphocyte predominant elevated like protein concentration and the normal and the glucose which goes in like more favor of and aseptic meningitis but aseptic meningitis is a part and the see uh, part and like a parcel of the leptospirosis so if at all if the like a patient has got and organ failures with altered sensorium so we should think of and the leptospiral meningeal involvement because the treatment and the duration actually differs it can go up to like 2 weeks or 3 weeks or sometimes up to like 6 weeks as well and the chest and the alveolar infiltrates the pulmonary hemorrhage the patient coming with under leptospirosis with the respiratory involvement the the most of the time 
the mortality is around 60 to 70 percent so if at all if you feel that the patient with like tropical infection with a pulmonary hemorrhage uh have a low threshold to put them onto ventilator like soon or if at all if they need any ventilatory and the strategies like all other things or ECMO be prepared for it so diagnosis so which is like most of the time so we miss this in the sense like a patient come to us on the very late so we all have read i think in the like second year mbbs like a dark field and the microscopy where we visualize and the leptospirosis but here it lacks the sensitivity uh, the specificity because so at least around 10000 of the leptospira should be available in 1 ml of the blood to see under dark field microscopy which is not like a possible at all in our like practice and igm elisa which is like most widely used but there are like many false positive because in the sense so there are like many other diseases which actually have like same feature of uh, igm antibody so it can be like false and positive as well and the mat test so which we all have read in the like second year mbbs that it is like a gold standard and all that but it is such a complicated the procedure the under the research labs does the these kind of the test it's not available in in all the routine labs so because it is uh, complicated in the sense the labs like should have these kind in the leptospira serover and the antibodies to match with the like a patient the antibodies if they don't have those like a serover antibodies it will be difficult uh, for them to actually give the uh, test result and the fourth most important is like a pcr the pcr is is something so which is actually seen in all the uh, in all the diseases nowadays but it is successful in detail, detecting like both in the serum and urine samples until and unless if we if it is available in our labs and we can do that and the culture media so we know it is it requires a special media but we don't use that in our the routine practice it's more of on the white tech and the technique like for all the like blood cultures in these days there is no role in the early diagnosis as such so no diagnosis with all these tests like sometimes it's very difficult it's more of a empirical treatment so so now doing all these tests it's not ideal for the routine clinical on a diagnosis so as i told earlier a negative serological test in the early phase does not actually rule out the disease it's still if the like, patient is like still uh, clinically sick and impending and the organ failures are going on be broad enough to start the patients on doxycycline or azithromycin or ceftriaxone and treat the patient until and unless if you feel that it is like, totally ruled out or you should always uh, treat them as what a tropical infections and positive serological test in the early phase uh, does not confirm the disease because most of this most of this test become antibodies become in the late phase of the disease because if you see here it's a immune phase immune phase is the phase like where igg igm antibodies become under positive so and negative igm release in the late acute phase confirms the absence of under leptospirosis the most of the time here like a problem is taking the history for all if the history tells only like a fever for like a 3 days it's very difficult to tell that like should we send the sample now or should we send the sample after 7 days so here diagnosis is a diagnostic and the dilemma for all of us and the treatment higher suspicion always IV doxycycline under MG and twice daily for seven days, or if you feel you can, you can give up to what to ten days or fifteen days as well, and uh, ceftriaxone in the one gram IV in the once daily and the organ supportive care. Immune phase is like a, something so which I have seen I think in like two or three patients where the patients actually on the land up with a pulmonary hemorrhage with leptospirosis. So these are the patients who actually require under plasma exchange. and steroids as well so like a, it is like a double edged sword with the, giving the steroids and also under treating the infections with doxycycline so but immune phase is something so we need to deal with it cleverly in the sense so tackling the infection and also like making the patient immunosuppression should be taken care of very carefully 
so this is all about leptospirosis and the scrub typhus so it is important in the cause of undifferentiated like fever in like southeast asia it is called like something called like a susugamushi like triangle so you all remember i think so we have read about like susugamushi so i was asked in my exam the susugamushi like spelling in a microbiology exam so susugamushi like triangle so it is like most commonly seen from the pakistan and afghanistan up to like northern japan to like uh, and eastern under russia up to australia why i'm telling all this is we all work in a like a multi speciality centers and the tertiary care centers so we do get like a patients who have traveled to like these countries so taking the history is like a most important so because uh, so you will see in the successive slides so there are like few countries like where they have the mdr bugs of this sort of tropical infection so and we need to know the history very clearly the scrub typhus has got some distinct in the properties just a moment here sorry yeah it is antigenically distinct from the typhus group so because it has got uh, it, it cannot be like uh, propagated in any uh, cell free like a media it has got a unique u tri lambda outer membrane so it's very difficult to isolate this in any uh, culture media and it has got like a three variants the carp gilliam and cato so we cannot actually like make out like which variant and we are like treating and also infection with like a one strain does not preclude a reinfection with a different strain it is actually like more dangerous than like a covid as well okay so with all these like properties diagnosis is often unconfirmed or overlooked or uh, confused with all the other endemic like febrile illness the only the best part is it is not contagious so the clinical signs the pathogenesis the most important thing is lymph histiocytic and the vasculitis so it involves the lymph gland so the patient will have headache anorexia like a malaise like fever with like chills and the rash non pruritic like a macrolic papular rash and they start like a formation so which is like a starts with a like a painless like a papule and subsequent on the necrosis it forms like a black crust as you can see here so it is like a black crust initially it was like a formed as like a painless and the papule because of the subsequent on the necrosis it has become like a black crust so whenever you see the patient with a tropical infection please examine them from the head to toe from the like all the crevices axilla the perineal areas knee joints like back especially the neck and also like the shoulder areas because these are the like signs which actually tells us about though diagnosing these tropical infections with a, in the laboratory test is like so difficult if you have these kind of in the clinical signs it is like a pathogen the interstitial fungal pneumonia which is more classical of under scrub typhus and the bilateral and the reticular opacities you know, we can see and the myocarditis and the delirium and the pneumonitis so if there is involvement of like brain and also the pneumonitis or any uh, hemorrhage it has got a like fatal outcome so whatever we do with iv doxycycline or azithromycin chance of an under survival or less so the severe illness what we have come across is relative like bradycardia the median increase in the heart rate will be less than under 10 beats per minute and any signs of encephalopathy like meningitis encephalitis and the features are aligned with like tb meningitis so no idea levels and there will be like a multi organ involvement and the reason like why i am like stressing out this is the tb meningitis the patient like will not have a multi organ involvement it is it's only like brain so here in the scrub typhus if at all if you feel that the like, patient is encephalopathic and though it comes as the features of the like csf evaluation is is goes in like more favor of like tb meningitis in the feature but with the multi organ involvement and we should actually think about the scrub typhus and meningitis and there is a study so which is done by i think like cmc vellu team uh, neurology team so they have done almost i think around 7 uh, years of you know, duration of studies they have come across like a scrub typhus meningitis so nearly around 
170 patients in a span of like seven years and the patients had a relapse even after treatment after like four weeks. So the scrub typhus meningitis, which is like a most commonly missed out, like a, sometimes thinking of like a TB meningitis and thrombocytopenia, it is seen in all the tropical infections. There is nothing different, but only with the severe illness, yes, it is something to be worried. So I think I'll come, I'll come back to this slide after this, okay. The lab diagnosis, the success of the test is in confirming the diagnosis is actually dependent on the, which type of the sample we have sent for the test. It also depends on amount of history and what we have taken, the clear history, the onset of fever and all that. The sample from HR, if at all, if you have the HR on the patient, take a biopsy from there and you uh, and the high chances of and isolating uh, the scrub typhus and from there or detecting and the antibodies in the first two weeks of illness and identification of and the organism in the cell culture which is uh, really difficult and also uh, uh, finding the, the antibodies and wheel felix so we all send this test uh, because like, uh, we all know from our uh, second year MBBS text, like uh, Will Felix has got, it is from the uh, scrub typhus. But if you see at the data, it has got like low sensitivity and the specificity. So uh, sending like a uh, Will Felix is of actually no use. So the treatment, doxycycline, as I told, therapeutic in the response. Therapeutic in the response in the sense, if at all, if organ injury becomes like stable or if uh, a thrombocytopenia, and the uh, platelet count, a decreasing trend stops and there is like some trend in the improvement. So then it is kind of uh, therapeutic in the response or the fever spikes are decreasing, the high grade fevers or the, uh, changing into kind of low grade. It is kind of a defervescence. It is used as a diagnostic test because all of all the laboratory and the parameters has come as the negative so you start them on this and the treatment if you see the response it itself tells it is a diagnostic test and severely ill patients giving them doxycycline through the rails tubes so without any central absorption it is actually no use if the like a patient is already on three and vasopressors and the norad adrenaline and vasopressin and if you give them uh, through and Riles tube and the doxycycline, it won't get absorbed at all. So IV doxycycline is something to be used like most of the time. If you don't have it, I think it will be better to uh, procure it or else IV uh, citromycin. Alternative high agent, it is actually preferred in the pregnancy. So because uh, doxycycline is actually under teratogenic. Duration of therapy, it all depends uh, seven days and 10 days or 15 days. So we do give like, uh, patients for like seven days. If you see the response from the like, third or the like fourth day dose onwards, if at all, if you don't see the like uh, the response and we might have to increase up to 10 days or 15 days as well. Short core therapy, uh, there's an increased risk of the relapse. So uh, this is actually from uh, the CMC value like, uh, in the study. In the combination therapy with the and rifampicin, it was actually tried, so but it, it did not show like much of the response. So this is the recent update, so which is actually released. So this study was released in like March 6th in NEGM, around oh, one month back. So it is a multi-center trial. It is actually done in India, the interest trial group. So where they are, I think around seven or eight centers the PGA Chandigarh, the CMC Vellur, PGA Rotak, and all these institutes have done this. And here, what they have done is the combination of the therapy with intravenous and the doxycycline and azithromycin had a better therapeutic option for the treatment of the severe scrub typhus than monotherapy with uh, doxy or azithro. So if at all, if you feel that like a patient has got a severe uh, the scrub typhus. So we have evidence now to start the like a patient on the combination therapy. Always better to go with the Indian data for our uh, tropical infection. So something with the Indian study in NEGM. So with all this, the positive findings is actually useful for our practice.